And joining me right now is the White House Council of Economic Advisors Chairman Kevin Hassett. And Kevin, it is always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for joining yeah. us. Thanks, Maria. It's great to be here. A lot to talk to you about about the broad yeah, yeah. economy, but let me kick it off with the news of the day. Obviously, Kirsten Nielsen is out. Did the president feel that she wasn't tough enough when 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 he was looking at the the number of apprehensions and how it was soaring? You know, I, I, I'm just the economist, and so if the president did have uh, thoughts about that, he wouldn't have brought them up with me. But I, I can say that I worked very closely with Secretary Nielsen all the way back to when she was the deputy chief of staff and that she was a real asset to this White House. And we're sorry to see her go and grateful for her service. But, uh, you know, I've been in the room uh, with a whole, her and a whole bunch of people in the White House, including the president, and never seen anything other than, you know, collegiality and, and a focus on trying to solve a really hard problem. Yeah, and I thought it appeared that she was doing a good job trying her mm -hmm. hardest to, to, to explain the, the situation to the American people whenever she could because it does look like a chaos there, chaos situation and a crisis situation. Kevin, is that going to impact the economy? Right. You know, I think that border security is a significant issue, that if you look at the economic costs of, like, all the opioids that come across the border and so on, they really are significant. And I think the president is right to prioritize that. And, and I also think that, that legal immigration is something that we at the White House and people in Congress need to look at, because everything sort of could be a lot better than it is, especially right now, border security. Yeah. Well, let me ask you about all of this conversation about where we are in the economy. You were quite mm -hmm. right in your assessment yeah. in terms of 3% growth for 2018, mm -hmm. uh, even though now we're talking about year over year 2.9 or, or, or around 3%. It was 2.97. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Okay, so you, I was wrong. you were, My like I said, I admit, quite right I admit, about yes. where, where you see things. Do you still think the U.S. is going to be able to grow and hold on to the 3% neighborhood, even in the face of weakness abroad? Well, you know, we're looking at the first quarter right now. We've got a lot of data in, and I, you know, I've been on your show a lot, Maria, at about this point where I've said, well, when we get the data on GDP, I think it's going to be about this. Right now, it's looking like it's around a 2% first quarter. And, and the thing is that one of the patterns we've seen in the data since 2010 is that the first quarter is about 1% below the rest of the year, or the average for the year. And so if we get a 2% first quarter, that means we are on track to get a 3% year. And you saw that in the jobs numbers, too, right? Like, so, so look at it last Friday a blockbuster number, you know, within rounding error of 200,000 jobs, which is about the sweet spot for 3% growth. And so I, I think that right now we're sticking to our forecast. Yeah, but I mean, Kevin, what, what about your colleagues urging the Fed to lower interest rates? And of course, I'm talking about Larry Kudlow saying, look, the Fed should cut rates by 50 basis points. Doesn't that contradict what you've been saying in terms of the economy is growing? We're at 3%. It's doing well. Yeah. Why would we need an urgent 50 basis point cut if things were so great. Well, you know, Larry speaks his mind, and, and he does so well. And it, as you know, he's, he's been on TV for a long, long time and, and really uh, has been watching markets for a long time and has, I think, some you know, words of wisdom about what he thinks. But that's not my job at CEA to share my words of wisdom with the Fed. The one thing I can say is that if uh, inflation were shooting way up, uh, then it would be the kind of thing that would cause uh, me concern if I were at the Fed. And right now, you know, the Fed itself acknowledged it looks like inflation is really headed down last year, which is what you and I talked about on your show more than a year ago. We said if we have a supply shock, you could have high economic growth without accelerating inflation. In fact, at CEA last year, we projected to go from about 2 percent to about 1.5 percent because of the supply side effects of the tax cuts. And so I think that there's not a lot of pressure right now on them. But, you know, I, I respect their independence and look forward to seeing their analysis for the rest of the year. So, again, you still think the U.S. can continue growing around 3 percent. Tell, tell me no, how I, you I see know, growth happening yeah, in 19. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, here's the way to think about it. I, like, I think that the, the really big cosmic thought is that we were the high corporate tax place on Earth and people didn't want to locate factories here anymore, that we lost a couple hundred thousand manufacturing jobs over the eight years of President Obama, and then we became an attractive climate again because of deregulation and because our tax cut, uh, you know, the corporate side cut all the way down to 21 percent. And so now, you know, everybody wants to move their stuff back here. You see it in the data. You see it in the capital spending and so on. And, and that's not a one-year thing. That's that's the kind of adjustment that takes three to five years historically. And so whatever you saw last year, all that capital spending, all the capital inflows from abroad, that's something that's going to continue for a while. All right. So so tell me about that. Where do you see the growth? Where do you see the weakness? If you want to really dig into the numbers on Friday, mm -hmm. we noticed that there was a decline in jobs in manufacturing, a decline 6, in jobs 000, in yeah. retail. But the other areas were quite strong. Services up 170,000 jobs or something like that. So tell mm -hmm. us where the growth and where the weakness is right now. Now, what are you watching? Well 
Well, what I was what I was watching in those numbers uh, was there's a pretty pretty good surge in construction spending and and construction uh, employment. I mean, and and I think construction has been one of the weak spots, especially in residential side. And I've been waiting for residential to take off. And and the thing about residential taking off is that that's a big upside risk for the economy actually, because what happens is that when people are building new homes, when there's a lot of residential construction, then a new home is sort of empty when you build it, right? So you got to put a washer dryer in, a TV, everything else. And so new home construction is really, really highly correlated with growth, say, above three, because you got you to fill that new house. If, if you buy an existing house, then we can sort of swap it at Antiques Roadshow, swap the stuff around and fill the houses up, and you don't need quite so much new stuff. And so I've been looking for residential to pick up this year because of the higher incomes, because uh, mortgage rates are down a little bit. And I think that that's really the thing that I'm watching most uh, for, for upside risks. Uh, for downside risk, you know, I'm, I'm not really sure right now if I see a lot of downside risk. I think the downside risk is going to be more exports to Europe and Asia. I think the Asian economy seems to have turned. I, I, I thought it had turned south, but I think it's sort of turning back north now. But the European economy is still looking pretty close to recession. And so I'd say downside risk would be firms that export to Europe. So just to be clear, you're not expecting recession in 2019. No, I, and I would guess that, that right now the risks are, are uh, on the upside, really, because residential looks like it might be starting to pick up. And if residential picks up, it'll be above our forecast. And that usually means it feeds through to consumption. It feeds through to everything else. Okay, I see. All right. Mm -hmm. Because people are just worried about a recession. I'm just trying to understand where this is coming from. Well, if you look at the jobs number on Friday, the recession odds are really, you know, they got a bunch of models that give you recession odds. They're all at about zero right now. At about zero. What about yeah. Stephen Moore, Herman Cain, President Trump's potential mm -hmm. nominees to the Federal Reserve Board of Governors, Kevin? Uh, what, what's your take on this sort of noise around both of them? These are President Trump's picks. You know his detractors, they mm -hmm. don't want him to have a victory. Are they going to make it to the Federal Reserve Board? You know, it's, it's one of those things that's actually like a subtlety that I think is really important. And I remember going through it myself is that the president will say, you know, I intend to nominate Kevin to be CEA chair. But then what happens is that you go through an enormous amount of work where you work through all of your holdings with the ethics guys and so on. And, and with me, one of the weird things was that I founded a, a nonprofit that builds little leagues in the inner city. And they made me resign from that nonprofit, which was a kind of weird thing that they would ask me. And so the point is that in the in the period between intend to nominate nominate and nominate, then there's a whole bunch of negotiation that goes on with government people. And, and, and during that process, it's usually traditional for White Houses to just sort of step back and, and not comment because that whole process has to work itself out. And out of respect for it, that's what I'll say, although I've known Herman, I've known Stephen for a long time, and I consider them good friends. All right. But, but, but right now, until they're nominated, I think the right thing to do is for us to, you know, let, let them fill out their paperwork, let them deal with their background checks and decide whether they really want to sell that thing that the government guys want, want you to sell. That's what every nominee goes through. And I I think they deserve the respect uh, that every other nominee gets, where they've got a little bit of privacy right now to work that through. And, and of course, we're also waiting as the president works through this U.S. China trade deal. The president mm -hmm. wrapped up meetings with the Chinese top negotiator last week. How important would a trade deal be for the economy and, and, and growth in the U.S., Kevin? Oh, I think it would be a, a big potentially a big positive and, and a big positive for equity markets as well, because really, you know, one of the things that's in play is that if Bartiromo Incorporated wants to sell its widgets in China, then, you know, right now they might make you have a, a partner over there that takes half your profits. And so if we open up the Chinese market to U.S. firms with no conditions, no IP theft, that's a big positive for U.S. markets. And, and you know, of course, a lot of manufacturing in the U.S. will go to be uh, selling into the Chinese market. Right now, if you look, we sell a heck, heck of a lot of stuff in China, but most everything that our firms sell in China, they make over in China because they've got such uh, restrictive trade policies. So I think, again, that's another big upside risk. And when I look at our 3% for the year, I see a heck of a lot more upside risk than downside risk right now. All right, real quick, what's your most important metric, Kevin, that you could point to to say, look, see, this is really what's driving growth right now? Oh, I think that, the, well, you saw it in the jobs number, but the most important metric is that income growth is really taking off. And, you know, we've got the bottom 10% of the income distribution. Their incomes are growing north of 6%, according to our latest estimate. And income is something that's kind of sticky. It takes a while for people to get their wage adjustments and to have income taken off. You know, if, you're, if your income just went up 6%, then your consumption should go up by about that this year. And I think that that gives us a lot of downside insurance uh, for a bad year because everybody's income is sort of on, a, on an upward path. And unless people start losing their jobs, which we haven't seen any sign of at all, then the strong income growth should uh, bolster consumption growth and the economy for the rest of the year. All right. Wages up three and a quarter percent year over year. Good stuff.